know when it happens. I know how it happens. You've only got three days. attacked. Still no word on the number of targets, but there's no question that St. Patrick's Day will now mark the largest coordinated terrorist attack in recorded history. The communication system of the United States has been determined to be at risk during this national emergency. For public safety, all private, non-official communication and entertainment will be temporarily suspended until further notice. To further safeguard the public, martial law has been established until further notice. Times like this, I remember my mentor Gavin. He was the best damn investigative journalist I'd ever seen. A year before the fall, though, he went off the deep end. He'd gotten some crazy religion and was absolutely convinced we were on the edge of a lawless apocalypse. We all thought he'd gone senile. I wouldn't even return his emails. But he was right. Everything he predicted was right on the money. By the time I'd opened my eyes, when I had had my own vision of the future, it was too late. The grid's been down for 20 days and the riots continue unabated. IRA freedom fighters have apparently teamed up with an anti-tech regime called the Knights of Xeno. They're actively destroying the remnants of technology. After 43 days, I have finally arrived back in New York City. Riots have all but gutted the streets. I've been to third world death zones and never seen a body count to compare with this. I've got to get moving. Day 88. If you're out there and have power for a radio, this is Jenna Whitmore. With the supply lines destroyed in the riots, those who don't know how to hunt or haven't foraged enough are dying of starvation. More dangerous than that are the plagues. People are going... feral. By my reckoning, it's been 419 days since the grid went down. I'm probably the only one who still keeps track, carving the days in the prison of my unlikely survival. When we lost our technology, we lost everything. It's funny, as a kid, my condition prevented me from playing with knives, but flames were the seductive siren that could hurt without tearing. Now the two of them are my only companions as the world we lived in was plunged from modern marvel to a throwback of the Wild West. Our modern world may be shredded and our population depleted, but we still hold on to the vestiges of the old ways. After the fall, small communes and tiny empires have arisen to offer shelter to those who need it. With so many bandits and diseases to be wary of, the leaders meticulously check travel and identity papers for any evidence that an applicant is a threat. The skills that I learned forging papers for myself are now priceless in a vicious world we live in. I tell myself the only people who use my services are innocent travelers who simply have no papers of their own. I hope it's true, but I know it's not. Other than the code of the traveler, no law remains anymore. Everyone does as they see fit. Nietzsche believed that modern man is an evolved creature. He never had to watch a paranoid woman strangle her best friend. 
or see a man leave his infant son to die on a trash heap so he wouldn't be slowed down. If this is Man Evolved, I wonder what monsters look like. This is my last communication. My large solar panel broke today. And my personal panel isn't powerful enough to charge the short wave. Is this the end? Dinner went warm. Out. <laughs>